Hey everyone and welcome to How To Hockey Card episode number 4 and in today's video we are going to be covering one of the hottest topics in both the sports card and trading card industry and that is whether or not you should grade a card and kind of card grading in general. So in today's video we're going to start things off by kind of giving you a background of what card grading is so if you're new to the hobby or new to grading you get an understanding of what it consists of all the way up to you know whether or not you should get a card graded because those are kind of like the two main things I want you to take away from this video. If you have any questions again please leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. But without further ado let's get into today's video and let's talk about card grading and what it is. So if you're new to the industry or new to the hobby as a whole card grading is essentially when a company grades your card based on its condition. They grade it on a scale of 1 to 10 with one being the card's been folded or beat up or just, you know, crumpled. I mean, crumpled isn't exactly the best phrase, but you get the idea it's not in very good shape to 10, which is the card is in literally perfect condition. So pretty much all they do is they take your card and they grade it based off of their criteria for it. And then they put it in a slab, which is just a giant plastic case. And then you have your graded card. Sounds really simple, right? Well, there's a lot of little nuances to it and we're going to cover all those so you kind of understand and have a better, you know, better understanding and better idea of what to look for when you're getting a card graded. So let's start off with the two companies that do card grading. There are, well, there's more than two, but there's two main ones. The two main ones are Beckett and PSA. Beckett is generally referred to as BGS just because it's Beckett graded services. It's a lot easier to say that BGS and Beckett graded services or Beckett graded card. Um, so you'll hear a lot of people just say BGS when it comes to a graded card from Beckett and PSA you'll just hear like PSA and then the condition. So that's generally actually you know something very important to remember is you'll hear like you know this card is a BGS 95 or this card is a PSA 10 and just things like that. So that's generally the card that is or company that it's graded by and then the card's condition. And so Beckett grades things a little bit differently from PSA. And they both have their pros and cons, and I'll get into why those are actually important for depending on what type of card you're grading later on. But let's go over what a BGS card looks like. So right here, we've got ourselves a BGS graded card. It's a Tyson Berry Future Watch from SP Authentic. So as you can see, it's in this very thick plastic slab. Uh, it's about as thick as a Sharpie. Uh, so it is, again, like once your card is in here, it isn't going anywhere. Uh, so it protects it very well, which is very important, again, when you're grading the card's condition. So you have, as we zoom in on this, you have kind of the set name. So this is 2012-13 SP Authentic. The player name and card number and any uh, attributes of the card. So this one has an autograph. And the kind of four things that Beckett grades. They grade the centering of the card, the edges, the corners, and, a, and the surface of it. Those combined get you your overall grade here. Uh, below it is kind of the card identifier, so you can look it up in Beckett's online tool and just make sure that it's actually that card. And Beckett also does autograph grading as well, so it'll grade the autograph as well. Uh, and as you can see, this card came back as a 95 gem mint. That is a good grade. It's not the best, but it is what you're looking for when you're getting a card graded. Generally, you're looking for a card that grades at 9.5 or higher because that's where the value of the cards increase. But the main thing wrong with this card was the centering. So either it's a little bit off from left to right, that's what centering is. So the card could be, you know, a little bit shifted to the left or the right or a little bit higher than it should be or a little bit lower than it should be. So I don't quite know which one. I believe the centering on this is actually a little bit on the up and down as you can tell there's like a little bit more room on the top than the bottom but nonetheless it got a nine on centering and nine five on everything else so it got gem mint which again is generally what you're looking for when you're getting a card graded uh it is a good grade and as you can tell again a little lots of little things that go on with grading a card uh oh one more thing about beckett is that they have kind of three types of colors up here for what their what their cards grade at so anything that's a gem mint and uh 10 that's not a pristine 10 uh, like a black label is in gold uh, black label is when all the subgrades are tens and they are very very hard to get uh, if you get a black label it increases the card value a lot just because of how hard they are to get and then also do i have an example of one yes i do uh, you also have you know the traditional silver labels for cards that are uh, lower than i think believe a nine or a lower gets a silver label, label actually. Uh, then you have PSA. PSA cards are 
again, they're very basic. Uh, they have set name, player, uh, the identifiers down here. You have this card number in the set and then the conditions. So this is a gem mint 10. This is literally the best grade you can get from PSA. Um, and yeah, as you can tell, the other thing is that this, uh, the slab for it is a lot thinner than the Beckett slab. So uh, those are kind of the main difference, main differences from the company is that PSA it just gives you one overall grade, whereas Beckett kind of can give you all the little subgrades of how they came to it. Uh, again, both have their pros and cons. We'll get into that a little bit later on. But yeah, so now you kind of understand the basics of what a graded card looks like and why, like what they're graded off of. Let's get into how cards are graded which I guess we just covered, but why you would grade a card. And the main reasons why you would grade a card, the first one is one that applies to absolutely every single part of grading a card, and that is to increase its value. A card that comes in at a higher grade is going to be worth more than a card at a lower grade or that's raw. And just the reasoning behind it is because a card that grades higher is rarer than one that's you know not graded because of its condition if you have a card that comes in you know if you have the barry 95 future watch autograph it's going to be more expensive than a barry future watch autograph at a nine or even one that's just you know ungraded because people don't quite know what exactly the condition of the card is and again a nine five is generally harder to get than a nine you're generally looking at most cards being an eight and a half to a nine when they come out of a pack depending on the product, depending on the manufacturer, and just depending on the print run as well. So a lot of little things to keep in mind there. Um, so that's mainly why you you know get a card graded is just to increase its value. The other main reasons that people do it is to kind of just, you know, for display purposes. I mean, these look really cool to display as well. Uh, for vintage cards, authenticity is a big one just to make sure the card is authentic. This applies to like the big rookies or big like retro cards. So for example, like Wayne Gretzky rookies, Michael Jordan rookies, stuff like that, older cards as well, just because people then know that they're authentic cards. They're not cards that are counterfeits or anything like that. Again, that's just something that kind of increases their value. Um, and then kind of finally, the final reason is just to maintain their condition. I mean, once it's in a sleeve like this, the condition isn't changing. So. Uh, you don't have to worry about it, you know, rattling around in a top loader or something like that or dropping the card. It is, once it's in there, like it is not moving and it is going to maintain that condition. So uh, those are the main reasons why people get a card graded. And then, yeah, so when you're looking to get a card graded, there's a few main things that you need to look for. And again, you kind of go over all of the main areas that are covered on a BGS card. So even when you're submitting a card to PSA, you wanna look at all of these things. So you wanna look at centering, you wanna look at corners, you wanna look at the edges, and you wanna look at the surface. So that way, you know, when you're choosing whether or not to grade a card, you're choosing a card that gets graded, um, you know, that's in good shape. But also the other important thing to remember is that you want to grade a card that is actually going to increase the value of. Grading a card isn't cheap. Uh, it can actually get quite pricey, especially if you do like next day grading and stuff like that. Uh, it, it can get up there. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're not grading a $1 card and it becomes, you know, a $15 card when it costs like $25 to grade the card because you're not really increasing the values. For example, I mean, you wouldn't grade this Travis Dermott uh, like OPG rookie, no matter what shape it is, it, it is in because, you know, like if it comes back, I mean, if it comes back as a black label, let's regain the focus here. Uh, if it comes back as a black label, that's great. You'll probably get a little bit more, but your odds of getting a black label and your odds of actually like increasing the value of that card are very slim. So you generally don't want to grade cards that aren't really worth a ton to begin with. So for hockey, this can apply to like OPG rookies of modern day players, such as like, you know, even like your Elias Pettersons, your, I wouldn't, I would say Connor McDavid, but if you get a 10 on an OPG Connor McDavid, even a 9.5, it can increase it enough to make it worth it. Um, but yeah, uh, types of cards that you would get graded, however, are young guns of like big players or older young or older young guns of like star players. So for example, this Tuka Rask uh, young gun would be a good card to get graded if it was in you know perfect shape. And so actually, I'll take it out of the top loader here, and so we can kind of go over a few different things about the card's condition. So let's get into this here. Uh, you got to be a little bit careful because taking the cards out can do a lot of things, but. 
Uh, for this one, because I will not be getting this card graded, I'm just going to take it out of its sleeve so we can kind of go through uh, the, the shape of it and what's important uh, when you're looking for a card to get graded. So let's start off with why I would get this card graded. First off, I get the card graded because it's from an older set and your likelihood of getting a card from, you know, even 2007, 2008 graded at a 9.5 is a lot lower because people A, weren't as into it and B, the technology wasn't quite as good for printing as it is nowadays. So nowadays you'll see cards generally on average grade a little bit higher just because people are looking for it more and also because the just the overall quality control has gotten better. But let's take this, let's take the Tukaraski on gun here and let's go through why whether or not we should grade it. So first off, the first thing we do is we assess its value. Is this card worth getting graded? Does it increase its value? If you're unsure of that, what you can do is you can use, you know, you can go on eBay and look at, you know, previous graded cards or just the general sale price of the cards and look at them and see what the value is. That's generally a good indicator because again, look up how much it costs to grade a card and then add that onto it. And if you, if the card is worth more after that, then it's probably worth it. If it's about the same, it is not really worth it. Or if it's even like less than the actual cost, then yeah, don't do not do it unless you just want to display it for whatever reason. But so yeah, the Tukarask, for example, graded a 9.5, this would actually command more than buying it raw. So yeah, this would be a card value wise that would be worth getting graded. So great, we have the first step, which is finding a card that is more valuable graded than ungraded. The second step is determining the condition of the card. And this one, again, it is, I mean, it's not in the best of shape. Like I wouldn't get this card graded, but we'll go through it here. So first off, it might be harder to see on camera, but centering of the card looks fine. Like it looks decently centered. I'm not really worried about the centering on this guy. What I am worried about on this guy is the, uh, the edges and the corners and the surface actually is pretty okay. But generally speaking, the edges and the corners are where this card is going to get dinged. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, but the top left, if we can get the zoom in on here, the top left corner, as you can tell, there's a little bit of white on there. Uh, it's not super like sharp, so it's actually going to get a lower grade. And also the top center has uh, a bit of like a ding in it. So it's got, you know, the white marks again, I don't know if you can fully see it. Uh, you can kind of see it right there, how it's got like the little bit of chipping on it. And so that's pretty much just, you know, it's a manufacturer defect, but it's going to result in a lower grade. So it might only get, you know, it might get an eight on the edges just because it's got that dinger even lower and then the corners as well. The rest of them all kind of have that little soft edge to them. They have the little bit of white. Um, so this is a card that I wouldn't get graded just based off its condition, but its value, I would get graded. Its condition, no. <laughs> So that's very important to keep in mind when getting a card graded. I'm just going to sleeve it back up and put it back into its top loader. And again, that doesn't mean the card's not worth anything. Like it's still, this card, if you were to send it in to get graded, it'd probably come back at like an eight, eight and a half. And that's fine. A lot of people get very picky over their graded cards. But at the end of the day, a card that comes out at an eight, five or an eight or even a nine is a card that's still in good shape. It's not perfect, but it's something that like, hey, if you were to look at it, you wouldn't really notice too much from afar. Like if I hold the Rask up here, you don't really notice anything wrong with it. It's when I bring it up to here that you start to see like the little defects. And that's why people pay the premium is just because they want their things to be in perfect shape. They want their PSA 10s, they want their BGS 10s. And um, yeah, so that's generally an example of a card that I wouldn't get graded because of its condition, but its value is there. Again, if we actually wanna look at the uh, Travis Dermot here, Foil cards are a little bit tougher just because you can get fingerprints on them. So again, you look at the surface, surface looks pretty okay on the card. Uh, you look at the edges, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to focus on this one. So this edge looks clean and the corner looks clean. This corner looks pretty clean. This corner has a little bit of a soft corner. Uh, it's easier actually to tell in the foil, it's kind of bent a little bit, uh, but it's nothing major. And then same on focus. This corner, yeah, it's in actually pretty good shape. So in terms of like the shape of this card, it's like gradeability wise off its condition. It's going to come back at at least probably a nine, if not a nine five. It's not perfect, so it's not going to get a ten. But it's a card that's on the border of whether or not you want to get it submitted. Because when you're submitting a card for grading, especially when it's a modern card, you want to make sure your card is going to hit that nine five mark. 
Anything below that, it doesn't really increase the value of the card. If it's for your personal collection, it's fine because you kind of keep it and it keeps the card condition, but anything higher, like it really just doesn't increase the value and it's really not worth the time or the risk of getting the card graded. Uh, and like, you know, cause there is a potential that the card does get damaged in the mail or something happens to the card or, you know, it comes back at a really bad grade. And at that point, you're just better off literally cracking the case open it and selling it raw to someone as opposed to just keeping it in, you know, the giant slab. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the general thing here. So do I have another card out here that's actually a good example? Um, not really out here, but um, let's go into a baseball card here. And depending on the sport too, is generally like very, it's very dependent on, you know, whether or not you get a card graded. So for example, uh, baseball and basketball is graded cards have, you know, a general higher premium because collectors value them a little bit more. So I got a lot of my, you know, baseball stuff graded here from uh, last year's Bowman's Best. And so uh, this card actually came back at a really high grade. It's a Bowman's Best Refractor Auto of Jared Kelenic. And so it came back like nine fives on everything and a 10 on edges. So it's a true gem mint with a 10 autograph. It's actually like about, you know, two half points away from a pristine 10. And then speaking of pristine 10s, um, I just picked up this beautiful Connor McDavid Young Gun Canvas. And again, as you can tell, it's got really good grades on centering edges, corners, and surface. It's actually, uh, like, it's literally a half point away from being a black label. And a black label, just, it really <laughs> increases the value of a card by a lot. But again, like, that's generally why you get a card graded. The other reason, again, as mentioned, is for vintage cards. So or even for oddball cards. We'll use this card as an example, uh, the Marion Hossa uh, Pee Wee card, because this is an oddball card. Uh, it's something that, you know, someone could probably print out. Um, look at that mug shot, by the way. Absolutely beautiful. But it's someone that someone could probably duplicate, but based off, you know, what they've seen, the card graders are gonna make sure it's authentic. And that's really important on cards like these because you wanna know whether or not it's authentic. And this card again, it got, it got eight on centering, eight on corners, uh, focus, there we go, uh, nine on edges and eight and a half on surface for an overall eight five. Um, and I mean, looking at it, the corners actually, I can see why they got a nine, but they're actually in decent shape. Um, the edges, again, decent shape and surface, Looks fine. Centering is definitely off. Like you can tell the center is a little bit off top to bottom. Uh, just there's a lot more white border at the bottom than there is at the top. And that's actually a really easy way to tell on older cards. But again, grading that card is from 1993. So it's kind of in that range where it's like, it's starting to get older and there's a lot more like miscut stuff. And as much as I say early 90s cards aren't worth grading, the little oddball cards like this, you they can be worth grading just because People know their authenticity is real and it's a legitimate card. But when we talk about like older vintage cards, stuff like Wayne Gretzky rookies, Gordie Howe rookies, Michael Jordan rookies, um, the main reason why people get those cards graded is A, to determine and make sure it's authentic, it's an authentic card. And B, just the higher value you get, like it just multiplies the value of a card. So for example, I have a top seven Wayne Gretzky, a PSA top seven Gretzky rookie. And it goes for, you know, on a good day, probably in the 800 range. But if it's a, you know, if it's an eight, it almost adds like $400 onto it sometimes, depending on the day. And, you know, every time you go up a higher grade, it just kind of adds exponential value. Uh, so that's generally why people get a card graded. Um, in terms of the differences between the companies, as I just kind of alluded to a little bit here, uh, generally with vintage cards, I'd recommend going with PSA just because the slabs are a little bit simpler on a vintage card. You really don't need like all the stuff, like the corners and the edges and stuff like that. Uh, you really just want what the overall condition of the card is. And it just, it just, I feel like it just looks better. And I trust PSA a little bit more with vintage grading than I do with Beckett. Uh, Beckett does have a vintage graded grading service, but again, I just, if you're submitting an old card for grading, I highly recommend going with PSA. Uh, I just trust them a little bit more with the grades for vintage cards. And again, it just, 
you don't really need again on a card from the 70s like the main thing you want is its authenticity and its overall grade you don't really care about what its corners are i mean you do but you don't really care about quite what its corners are its edges its centering and stuff like that you just want what the overall shape of the card is and psa is generally your best bet again it's it's highly recommended for me if you're getting like a vintage card graded so anything like generally like pre-90s even i would recommend going with psa and for modern cards beckett works again very well same with uh psa psa is fine they both have and their pros and cons bgs beckett is a little bit more common to see uh just because if you do bulk submissions it's a little bit cheaper psa um psa actually depends on i think the value of the card that you're getting graded the price actually will change but um yeah like the company you choose ultimately is up to you i again i do recommend if you're doing vintage um check out check out psa for vintage cards i just like the look of it a lot better especially for uh for vintage cards again it's just got the single number that's all you really care about on a vintage card and making sure it's authentic obviously um but yeah that's pretty much what you look for in getting a card graded and why you get a card graded um how to get your card graded you can either go to beckett or psa and they kind of will walk you through the steps uh the other option and this is something that i highly recommend checking out is finding your local card store and seeing if they do bulk submissions especially for beckett because it can reduce the price a lot the more cards you submit for grading the cheaper they get for beckett psa they also do get cheaper but beckett that gets substantially cheaper and there's a flat rate for the cards whereas psa is generally kind of a fixed rate so Again, pros and cons to both. Uh, there is, again, there's no quite right or wrong answer. Uh, if you're doing modern cards, though, I suggest, you know, Beckett's probably a little bit better. If you're doing vintage cards, I'd recommend PSA. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the basics of getting cards graded. Um, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Uh, in terms of, oh, one final thing I'll cover, and this will kind of go into hockey cards, is kind of again just why you'd get a card graded and what kind of sets are good for grading so anything that's a rookie card and this applies to all sports as well rookie cards are generally the best cards to get graded uh because it's the only time that they'll have one of them so for example if you have like just the base card of Sidney crosby it's not gonna be worth a lot to get graded even if it comes back at like a gem mint 10. i see this with like mcdavid canvases in like his second and third year and People are just like, oh yeah, like it's a black label, that's great. But at the same time, it's like, it's just a regular canvas insert. It's not a rookie year card. It's not like something that I need to have. I'm fine with just having it in a regular, you know, top loader. Um, so that's really important to keep in mind is that rookie cards are generally the best things to look at getting graded for the modern era. Uh, the sets I'd recommend for hockey is Young Guns. Young Guns especially uh, for getting graded, probably the most iconic card to get graded and just the best card to get graded. They generally hold their value the most. Um, when you get to things like patches, like for example, I have a future watch patch auto here of Clayton Keller, um, patches and stuff like anything with an on-card autograph can generally, it's a good idea to get them graded if they're in good shape, if they're not in good shape, which happens more often than not, because when you think about it, you know, the card's got to get shipped to multiple places. The player's got to sign them so there's a lot of like handling things um it generally you know it adds more risk of the card coming back at a lower grade especially on things like surface and such but with that being said like if you do have a card like the tyson berry you know the future watch auto getting a future watch auto graded at a 9.5 or even like a psa 10 is very very important because guess what that card is in very good shape and considering it's traveled so many places it makes it really important so that's especially true with hard sign stuff but again just be very careful when submitting a card for grading make sure you're grading a card the kind of basics are make sure you're grading a card that is going to increase its value if you like at the end of the day you can grade whatever card you want but if you're going to grade a card do it on a card that it's going to increase its value for unless you just really want it in the slab uh, because otherwise you're pretty much just you know you're throwing money away for lack of a better phrase um and make sure the card's in good shape like really inspect your cards you can do things like just you know using your iphone to take pictures or zoom in on the corners and look for things like you know corners that are a little bit dull so corners that have like little you can tell on the tuka rask like the little white spots or any marks on the edges or any marks on the card i'll look at other cards and see kind of how they're centered uh 
It's a little bit harder on some of the cards. Like this Rask Young Gun is a little bit harder to see what the centering is on the front. The back is a better, you know, kind of indicator and just kind of like inspect your card. So a lot of people will use like a magnifying glass with a flashlight built in as well. That's a good idea, but you can generally eyeball it to get a general idea. And again, I've really, like, especially if it's a modern card, you want to grade a card that's going to get a 9.5 or higher unless you're PCing it because simply put, like the value doesn't increase from you know, a raw card to a nine. Like if it's a raw card in good shape, it's gonna be about the same as a card that gets a BGS nine. So just some little things to keep in mind there. Uh, so yeah, pretty much make sure when you're grading a card that it's in good shape, uh, you know, go through, look at the corners, look at the edges. And then when you're shipping it, make sure you, you know, you, you make sure it's packaged properly. Like put it in a bubble mailer, what I like to do is I like to, you know, let's grab, let's grab an example here. Actually, this Tavares is a good example here. So like, I like to grab the card. This one's got, this is a patch. So for example, if it was just the young gun, I'd grab the card. If I have some decoys laying around like this, I just kind of put them there, protect it, then put it in a bubble mailer. And that way it'll just kind of keep the card more securely packaged. It'll make sure that, you know, if it does get bumped or anything like that, or if it's something does hit the front somehow, uh, that the card doesn't actually get wrecked. And that's very important when shipping it out in general, just when you're ever doing shipping. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Um, again, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below or reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at the Flopfish. It's in the description below as well. Um, that pretty much will wrap things up for today's video. Again, Thank you so much for watching. If this helped you at all, please leave a like, please leave a comment and let me know what you want to see for the next video as well. I think I might actually cover just like how to ship cards because I feel like it's kind of the natural progression of the, the videos. And that's something that's very important when you're doing buying, selling and trading. But as always, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. And it's been a long video, but hopefully this has helped you in any way, shape or form. And take it easy, and I'll catch you guys on the flop side. Peace.